So the other day I'm playing this guitar at my church and I noticed it was kind of noisy, like more noisy than normal. Now it could have been a number of things, it could have been like a ground loop in the building, it could have been the lights or my orientation towards them, but I thought, you know, I've never really properly shielded this guitar and even if it helps a little bit, it's probably worth it. Now I have shielded another Telecaster guitar that I have, it's actually right here. It's sort of a 50s era, what you would call it, a Blackguard Tele. And uh, I'm gonna put links down below and up here on the screen that you can watch the video about that that I did. It's not gonna be really different than this one, I'm gonna be honest about it. But I did learn some things when I was shielding that guitar that I found really helpful, sort of a quick method that really works well. And it doesn't involve like expensive copper or even like cheap aluminum foil that's gonna tear on you. It involves, well, I'm gonna show you later. But I hope you'll follow me on this journey and maybe we'll learn some new things. Maybe I'll even um, make the process a little bit better and we'll all learn something together. So uh, right now what I'm gonna do is try to attempt like a before sound so I can get a baseline and I can tell that what I do to the guitar, anything that I modify actually works and makes it quieter. So I've got right here a Yamaha THR10 a uh, little portable amp and I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna get some sounds, some not so great sounds and then we'll have our bass line and then I'll do the work to the guitar. I'll show you that and then we'll come back in this exact same setup and see if it changed. So let's turn this on. We should hear a little bit of like slight noise but I've got the volume pot turned all the way down. So let's turn it up. We're gonna be on the bridge position first. Now I'll just let you hear that. I've got my hand on the strings and you're gonna notice when I take them off, it's gonna get louder. So that of course is a grounding thing. So that's the bridge. I'm gonna to go to the middle position now. And now to the neck. So I would expect the middle position to be a little bit quieter. That's kind of concerning to me. It does change. It is different than the bridge and the neck positions. So there's bridge, middle, neck. Now I want to try something real quick. So I'll put my hands on the strings. Now let's see if we can hear that difference. So I'm on the neck, middle, bridge. So yeah, if I sort of cancel out the grounding part of it, you can tell that the middle does sort of uh, cancel out. It is hum canceling in that position. So I will see you here after I do the work and we'll see if it made a difference. Okay, first things first, if it's not already obvious enough, I need to take the strings and the pick card off. I'll speed through that process so I don't bore you with it. Now I've got this black cloth here to uh, protect the guitar or the pick guard as needed as I take it off. I'm gonna to try to flip it over this way so it shouldn't matter as much, but for the ashtray bridge, that might be one where I need to protect the guitar a little bit more, or like for this, I'm just gonna slide it through here to protect the finish on that side. So I think that should give me the uh, access that I need. Now the tricky part's gonna be, I guess, without unwiring some things is just getting around the wires that are there. What I think I need to do is part of the attempt to make it quieter is you see these wires here are braided and the same up here if you can see it with the neck pickup. So that braiding or coiling of the wires helps to cancel out the noise if you think of it as uh, the, the sound wave is like a like a sine wave and so maybe the black is going up when the white peak is going down and they sort of cancel each other out or help to kind of like an out of phase thing so i don't know all the science behind it i won't pretend that i do but i know uh, based on others experience and people who are smarter than me that it helps out so that's being done here on the on the bridge pickup i sort of lost the coils you know going on here but i don't think that necessarily matters i'm not probably going to unsolder these and redo them but i will try to unsolder these wires and coil those around each other so maybe that'll help with the signal going out of the guitar maybe get rid of some of that noise yeah so we also obviously have to take the ashtray bridge off thankfully with my setup these saddles are far enough back or towards the neck that i can get access to these screws some telecasters just the, the way the intonation works out the 
saddles are way back here and you can't get to these screws without taking the saddles out or at least moving them forward or back, whatever. And then you have to go reset your intonation and all that. So thankfully I don't have to do that. And it's pretty simple to take this off without changing the saddles. And of course I don't, I shouldn't have to take the pickup out either. I will have to take this pickup out, the neck pickup, because I am going to, and obviously other controls, because I'm going to take some aluminum foil and shield the pickguard. So we'll do that in the process as well. So let's get going. So I think I'm gonna tackle the shielding first of these cavities before I move on to anything else like the pickguard or the wiring just because I've already got some pretty good access to it and it'll be some small victories. Now this is the stuff I'm gonna use. It's just uh, aluminum foil tape or aluminum tape. I got it from Harbor Freight. It's pretty cheap. I don't remember exactly how much it was. Uh, I've had it for a couple of years, so the price has probably gone up a little bit, but it's way less expensive than copper. And it does have an adhesive back to it, but the adhesive is not conductive. So therefore you have to come up with a little bit of a solution, which I found to be pretty simple and effective. So I'll show you that, but essentially what I'm gonna do is take this uncut length or width and go around the vertical edges of the cavities. So I'll probably try to go all the way this way because it's a continual sort of uninterrupted loop. Go up to here. And I don't know if you can, yeah, I think you can see it. There's a little bit of a step down at this point, uh, the routing. So I'll probably, you know, cut off the pieces here and then I'll take another continuous piece and go around this cavity. And then I can connect them together with the method that I previously described. Once I do that, I'm gonna take a piece. I don't know if the width, uh, it's probably good. I think it'll work. But anyway, I'll take another piece of tape I'll get the sort of rough dimensions of the cavities and then I'll kind of cut it and then place it down in there to cover the bottom. And then I'll connect the bottom piece with the pieces on the vertical edges. So you'll kind of see me walk through that and uh, it should hopefully go pretty well and pretty easily. I'm just going to take a damp cloth and try to get off any kind of dust that is on the edges and the bottom so that the adhesive can stick better. Pretty rough in here. I mean, when they paint the insides of these cavities, it's not like they need to wet sand it or make it really smooth for any reason. So it's pretty rough and you know, sometimes it's dirty. So you just need to clean it. All right, let's try to apply this tape. Okay, so making that one continuous piece with the stickiness of the tape is not necessarily that easy. And you know, you want to get it flush to the bottom so you don't want it like creeping up at an angle as you go. So you gotta keep it down and also work it around the corners and not have it stick everywhere. But I got it pretty good and it wasn't too difficult. So what I need to do now is get rid of all this excess. But what I need to do is leave a little bit of a lip so that it can bend down on top of the body of the guitar because that needs to contact the pick guard, which is gonna be shielded on the bottom so that it creates a sort of cage, a Faraday cage is what they call it. And so that's what we need that little lip for to make that connection. So now I'm gonna use a little razor blade that I have here and just go uh, around the edge and make sure I've got, like I said, a little bit of a lip so that I can fold that down and stick it to the top of the guitar. All right, so there's our lip and we're probably gonna need to make some slits in here so that it can fold down all the way. Um, we could also, you know, just overlap it, fold it, but I don't know what the best method is. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here in a way. But yeah, on these corners especially, it's a little bit easier to make a slit 
like that so it can fold down a little bit easier. Okay, so that's our basic premise for the outside wall. I'm gonna continue on, like I said, making these other pieces. This, for example, is probably not, yeah, in no way is it gonna be one continuous piece because the tape doesn't bend like that. So I'm probably gonna make one like here and then make another one uh, right here. And then, like I said, I'll show you how I connect them and we'll keep going. So for this cavity, what I'm gonna do is take the tape on the paper side and give it some rough dimensions and I'll cut it out with scissors and that way it'll be uh, pretty much the right size and should fit down in there easily. So, like I said, it just needs to be rough and a little bit bigger than I need. You want more excess, you know, more material than not. So I'm gonna kind of like just put some marks about the dimensions. So the lengthwise, I need about that much. And then the width, I'll keep one finished edge. I don't need to cut more than it don't more than necessary but on this side you know like I need like this much so I'll cut that out and then it should fit down in there pretty easily so yeah now I've got my rough sized piece and I'm going to take the backing off and we'll stick it down in there So there you go, pretty simple. Like I said, I feel like I've come up with a pretty easy method of doing this. It would help, I guess, if I had like a popsicle stick or something with a not too sharp of an edge, but I could kind of push down in there. So I'll try to grab something like that and do that just as a extra measure of making sure it's all the way down in there. Probably doesn't matter too much, but it'll just make it look a little bit nicer, I guess. Okay, I got a little popsicle stick here. It's yellow for some reason but I can go down in the corners and just kind of press it down a little bit more. And it's a nice little handy tool. Make sure it's all down in there really well. Okay, let's move on. So if you remember, I had this really long piece from this vertical uh, strip that I put in, and it's actually gonna be a pretty good size for this little channel here. So I'm just gonna cut it to a rough length. I can without it sticking all over the place and we should be good. All right, looks pretty good. So at this point, I need to connect all these pieces together so that I have conductivity between all of them. There's one continuous, you know, electrical connection amongst them all. So, so I have a multimeter here, just a cheap one. I don't know where I got it, but you can get these uh, at an inexpensive price pretty much anywhere. Just gonna put it on the little sound piece, the little volume here. And if I do that, if I just touch these together, for example, it's just showing that there's a continuous loop. And so by demonstration, if I put the two of these on any points of the vertical piece, the one continuous piece, it should obviously be continuous. So let me put this up here so you can hear it better. Okay, so that's continuous. Now these two pieces on the bottom of the channel should not be because they're not touching. They're only touching by the adhesive, which is not conductive. So here's my method for, let me put this back. Okay, so here's the method. It's really simple. You need to get one piece that's slightly bigger than another piece. And the idea is to take the backing off, but put them down adhesive side to adhesive side, something like that. And then when you, it doesn't even have to be this big. I actually have a, a spot over here where I can see a little bit of paint where they didn't all, um, you know, mesh up exactly the way I wanted to. But they also, it's at a point where all three pieces come together. So I'm gonna just cover that bare spot up and do this connection at the same time. But anyway, so when you do it, you have this piece that's gonna connect the two pieces that you wanna connect. And then this other piece is just gonna stick it down. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'll show you and I'll, as I do it, hopefully it'll make more sense. But again, you know, this is the, the electrically con connected, conductive, conductive side, yeah. And it's gonna make contact with these pieces. And this is just gonna act like tape more or less. So let me show you how to do that. Okay. so. Got the adhesive starting to work itself off the backs of these. 
Again, I'm gonna put the sticky side up on this larger piece. If I can get my fingers unstuck from it. Okay, something like that. Now I'm gonna take this piece, take the backing off like so, and then I'm gonna stick it down, sticky side to sticky side like this. Okay, so now I've got a piece that looks like that. And then I'm gonna stick all of that down or I'm gonna connect the pieces that I want connected together. Okay, now I should, if I did it right, have connectivity between all of these pieces. So let's test it out. Yep, so between this vertical piece and the bottom piece, I'm good. Between this um, horizontal or flat piece on the bottom and this bottom piece, I'm good. All around, I'm good. All right, mission accomplished. Okay, this part's gonna be a little trickier. I'm gonna have to get around these wires here uh, to make this continuous loop. Uh, I may split it like over here where the output jack is. I'm just gonna kind of see how it goes and adjust as needed. Okay, that went pretty well considering the amount of obstacles I had in my way. So now I'm going to make the little lip around and so that we have the, uh, the connection on top of the guitar for the pick guard. Not bad. Okay, for this bottom piece, I am gonna take a piece of aluminum foil. Uh, again, this is aluminum foil, not the tape. And the only reason I'm gonna use this is to kind of press down and get an idea of the dimensions of this cavity. So if I do like that, press down all the sides, I get a rough idea of that cavity size. And now I can put that, I can trace out on my tape the size of that and get a better uh, dimensional piece for that cavity. Okay, so that's not very pretty but it'll work and it should be the same basic dimension of that cavity okay there we go now to try and put this in here should be pretty fun Okay, not bad. Um, went better than I thought. Wasn't necessarily the easiest, but it's in there and it's doing the job. It actually was the um, width enough to make it all the way across. And I don't have any paint showing on these edges in here. So that's good. Um, I try to show you a better picture of what's going on here in a second, but I'm basically just cutting out a hole for these wires and the outlet jack because i don't want any of the hot parts of the jack touching the ground or the tape um just in case so it doesn't short out or anything so um and then for these wires from the bridge i just you know i made a little cutout or a slice for them to poke through 
And that's basically it. So now we got to go clean it up a little bit and then make the connections so that all this is one continuous piece. So to connect these, I think what I'm going to do is just put a small piece like over here to connect the uh, vertical and the horizontal pieces together. And then um, once those are tied together, I just need to tie those two newly connected pieces back to this whole section. So I'll probably put it on this little step down here. So um, yeah, so I'll use two sort of connecting pieces uh, just because I don't want to try to capture all of it in this little corner and hope for the best. I don't have a spot over here like I did where I knew I would get a good connection. So that's my plan. Okay, so there's my little piece. If you can see it again, sticky side to sticky side and then sticky side down. I'm just gonna put it over here where I can connect these bottom two pieces or these pieces, the one on the top or the bottom and the one going vertically. Okay, now let's check those, see if we made the connection. And we did. All right, now we gotta do uh, this section to this section because right now they're showing they have connectivity, but I don't necessarily trust that. So I'm gonna just make assurance and put a little piece in here. I think this is just a happy accident at the moment. Okay, here's my piece I'm gonna put down in here. Once again, sticky side to sticky side and then sticky side down. Just for good measure, let's check it again. Looks like we're good. Okay, now I'm gonna take off the ashtray bridge. Okay, there we go. Exposed cavity, kinda clean that up a little bit, make sure there's no dust, and then we're gonna repeat the process. Okay, now that that's done, let me explain how this is gonna work, connecting these cavities, this one here, the smaller one, the bridge one to this bigger one here. So this Tele and most Tele bridge pickups have a base plate. Hopefully you can see it here. This is a Lambertones Blondie pickup. And so it's making contact with the bridge plate through the screws. The screws are contacting the, the bridge pickup plate and the, the bridge plate itself. And then of course the bridge plate is gonna be connecting on top of this. And then of course this is connected to this. So that's gonna be again connected to the pick guard. And so that's gonna tie it all together. Of course the bridge pickup and the neck pickup are grounded with the wire to the back of the pots. So that's gonna make that connection as well. Okay, now what I plan to do is, like I said, sort of braid these wires together, twist them together. I'm probably gonna take off this white wire because the black wire is grounded with three other wires to the back of a pot. And so that's gonna be more of a hassle to undo all those and solder them back. This is in a tight spot, so that's not gonna be necessarily easy either. I'm gonna try to get rid of this blue wire. It's a little chintzy and I feel like it's gonna break. So I've got some pushback wire. And so I'm gonna use that to replace this blue wire and then possibly going to disconnect the bridge pickup wiring and twist it a little bit better. I don't think it really is gonna matter, so I may just not do that, save myself some of the hassle. I don't know how much of this I'm gonna actually show because one, it's boring to watch. You're probably not gonna be able to see the details. The other thing is I hate soldering. It never seems to go well for me because of all the tight spaces and everything. So. For those reasons, you know, the, and then the camera being on just makes it even worse. So I'll show a little bit, probably just speed it up in the video and hopefully it all goes well. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, for the pickguard, like I said earlier, I've just got a piece of aluminum foil. I sprayed the back of the pickguard 
I don't know if you can see any of that, maybe in the light. But yeah, there's some adhesive on there. I used this 3M General Purpose 45 spray. I don't remember where I got this. I've had it for years, but uh, it works great. Uh, I sprayed it outside, actually, because it gets tackier the more you let it kind of sit for a couple of minutes. And so, and it's messy. And so I just sprayed it outside, but I did spray over this aluminum part here that was already on there. It doesn't really matter. So it's tacky enough and I'm just gonna put it down on the aluminum foil and it should be good. And now I just need to cut it out with the razor blade. As you can hopefully tell, I'm cutting at an angle sort of like this so that it gets uh, all of it that could potentially show on the outside and just, you know, again, just make sure all the aluminum foil is hidden underneath the guard and not visible on top. So there you go, easy peasy, when squeezy, it's not exactly uh, without wrinkles, but it's gonna do the job. And just for good measure, here we go, let's just test this out. Excellent. Okay, I'm back, the guitar is all buttoned up. Moment of truth, we're gonna see if the work that I did made any difference at all. Turning on the amp now, it's gonna take a second. Okay, so I'm in the bridge position, I'm hearing some noise, my fingers are on the strings. Let's take fingers off strings. No difference. Interesting, so let's go to middle. Pretty much silent, touching the strings. No difference. Going to the neck, hearing some noise, touching the strings. The noise is pretty much the same as the uh, bridge pickup, as you would expect. So. Again, bridge, middle, neck. So what this tells me is that this was a success because if you remember before, if my hands weren't touching any metal parts or the strings, there was noise in all three positions. And now there's virtually no difference in when I touch the strings or I don't. I'm hearing some noise in the bridge and neck, but in the middle, it's essentially silent. So I think the shielding worked. I'm glad I did it. Thank you for coming along. I'm gonna call this one a wrap. We'll see you next time.